Yeah, here I'm at the grocery store. I'm gonna go over to this display. There's some of these weird potatoes or something. What are those? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There go the heirloom tomatoes. Okay. Uh, so this is like a big weird potato thing. I don't even know. I think it's... I don't know what it is. What is All the way from Publix to my yard. Welcome back. I'm David the Good, and today we are going to plant true yams. These are not sweet potatoes. These are real yams. It's one of those things, every time I say yams, people go, oh, I love those. My, my mom makes this yam pie or whatever, and, and that's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about Dioscoria species, not Ipomea, Ipomia, however you say it. Potatoes. No, it's not sweet potatoes. It is yams. And these are a starchy root. This is a vining root. And not a vine that creeps on the ground, but a vine that goes way up into the trees. It'll go 40 feet up into a tree. These are a staple crop in the tropics. And they are a starchy crop that must be cooked. And they are much more like eating an Irish potato than like eating a sweet potato. They are not sweet. This is a perfect staple survival crop, and we are gonna grow them right here in Alabama. So, first thing I had to do was secure a supply, and thanks to my favorite supermarket, Publix, I got him. This is the top of the yam, where the old vine would have been. And this part here is what Grenadians call the food. <laughs> this is the food. This is the head. So what we're gonna do is take this head part off right here. And if we wanted to just get one yam plant, we could plant just that and eat the rest. That right there, the head would, would make one plant and then we could just take this part and eat it if you wanted to just perpetually regrow them. However, I'm not gonna do that. If you split this guy into pieces, as nicely as you can with a dull knife, pieces about like that, each one of these pieces can grow into a root. It will make little buds out of the side. Looks like one of my kids was coloring on this with a, like a marker on it or something. I guess my thumbs are green. <laughs> That's weird. All right, so there's one more step before I put these guys in the ground, and that is I put some ashes on it. So these are ashes from the fireplace, just regular old ashes. And what this helps to do is keep the fungi and the rot out of it. I want this to cover it up and stick. So any cut surfaces get an ash treatment like that. This is this is developing world technology here. We don't need fancy fungicides and stuff. Just some ashes. Now, this is another type of propagule. These are aerial roots from what is probably a different species. These guys here may be Cayenneensis. They may be Dioscoria alata. They may be a variety of alata, but these guys here are the wilder Dioscoria alata variety that grows here and there. And these are aerial roots that actually grow along the vine. And I could plant these just like seeds in my garden, no cutting required. I could plant them right in the ground and they will grow into big roots. These are from last year's crop, and a friend of mine um, gave me these and I got some of them from the South Florida Food Forest Project. I have a bunch of these, and these guys are just plant like seeds. These guys from the store, which is what most people can get, which is why I bought some to show you, um, we're gonna have to divide and cut off. So same thing here on this one. I'm gonna take the head off. It'd be better if I had a big, sharp knife, but no problem. Take the head off and then I'll cut the rest of it up. It's 
So long as you have some piece of the skin on there, I could probably cut this even smaller, but I don't want to push it. But so long as you have some of the skin on there, that's where the new growth is going to grow out. If it won't grow out of the inside, that's just the starchy storage area. But that little thin layer of skin, that's where it propagates from. And now we have our planting material. We just have to go and plant. Now it's important to make sure that you have loose soil to grow these in. They don't do particularly well if the soil is really hard. They like sand, they will grow in clay, but if you can dig a little deeper when you put them in, that helps. And if you have some organic matter to throw in the bottom, so much the better. In clay, down in the Caribbean when I grew them, I would make these mounds, these big banks, because a local farmer friend of mine showed me how to do that. Here I don't need to really go that high, I don't think, because we have sand. But, you know, we would actually make hills loosen the soil. You basically would dig a trench, lay the yams in it, and then dig over the top with another mound of soil. So we had about, you know, maybe a foot and a half or two feet of loose soil that the roots could grow into. And, and it's important to know too that the roots are going to grow down from the piece that you plant. So if you plant that piece, you know, four inches down, sure the top of it's gonna come up fine, but it is also going to start growing down from that four inch point and maybe go an additional, you know, foot or so. So if you plant them a little, pretty close to the top of the surface, but enough, you know, enough in the soil that they're not gonna dry out, that's better. Up closer towards the top, thinking about the eventual root going down. Here I'm just kind of planting them in between the stuff that I've already got. Here, this is kind of casual. And I'm probably gonna have to stick sticks running up to this top vine here because this is gonna get pulled down by them. I'm switching over. The rebar was all I could use down the Caribbean because nobody had T-posts, but I've got access to T-posts now so I can stick the occasional T-post in here and get some really strong support from the top. Alternately, you could just go out and dig sticks, cut sticks in the woods and stick this, dig the sticks into the ground like a couple of feet deep, you know, get yourself some seven, eight foot limbs or whatever, stick them in the ground. Or you can grow them up cattle panels. You can grow them on your fence. You can pick a tree, plant them near the base of the tree in a loose spot. They will climb up in there. It doesn't even matter if it's shady. They will shoot for the sky and turn around and give you a pretty nice results by just finding the sunlight. They'll climb up into the tree and find the sunny spot. And that's where they'll put all their leaves. Just need to make sure that they're not gonna be in total shade and there's no way they can reach the sun. But they're happy to climb into a tree canopy and live under the tree. As a matter of fact, their close relative called the air potato, the dreaded air potato, which grows wild all over Florida likes to grow in the woods and you'll see them often in the woods because the vines climb way up and then they drop their little bull bills all over the place and those bull bills will root again the next year and then they'll they'll climb until they find a sunny spot and go unfortunately those wild ones in Florida are generally not edible if you could find Dioscoria alata that's great and I'll have to put a link to my video 
showing you the difference between the Alata, which is a very good food plant, and the Dioscoria bulbifera, which is not. If you haven't seen my video showing the difference, that will be very helpful when you encounter these guys in the wild, because it may be you have a source of wild food right around the corner from you, and you don't have to do all this work. Another trick I learned on the island is throw some rotten material or some straw, that kind of thing, down into the hole, and the plant will grow through it instead of getting stuck in the ground. And I'm putting a little bit of that Steve's Mixed Fertilizer in there too. I don't want to rob all the nitrogen. Got a little bit of biochar in there too. And then we'll plant on top. So we put the cut side down. And we wait. It could take a month or more. They come out of dormancy when they feel like coming out of dormancy. And it's usually when the soil is nice and warm and they feel like waking up. You really just have no idea. But generally, uh, down in Florida, they start popping up in March. Up here, I wouldn't be surprised if it's sometime next month. You can expect your roots to grow to about four to six pounds, maybe eight pounds, if they're really happy the first year. But if you leave them in the ground, this is a perennial plant. And the next year, it will come back and it will consume the previous year's yam. So what happens is they have a dormancy cycle. They go to sleep around November to December, whether it freezes or not. I mean, in the tropics, they do this. Whether it freezes or not, they're gonna do that. And they will go to sleep, the vines die down, and the tuber starts to fatten up. My guess is that the tuber really starts to fatten up sometime around the solstice. It starts to grow, and then it grows, and then it grows, and then it grows, and it, then the whole top of the vine dies back and all of that sugar and everything in that vine goes down into the root and the root hardens up beneath the ground at its full size for that year. And it stays that size and it sleeps all the way until the next spring. Then in the next spring, say March or April or whatever, it pops up and it grows crazy because you've now got maybe a six pound root beneath the ground. And that six pound root puts up a lot of vine. I've seen vines go six to eight foot straight up with no leaves on them, like that big around, like half inch around, straight up like a snake, looking for a tree to climb. So you see that growth and you say, well, I'm gonna dig that, I'm gonna dig that thing up now. And you dig it up, a little while after it starts growing and the root has started to get spongy and lousy because it's consuming the root in order to put on growth. So what you gotta do is just wait that year and then that fall, when it dies down again, you dig it up. And now this time, it makes a brand new root. It consumes a previous root, makes a brand new root. This time that root might be 15 pounds or 20 pounds or 30 pounds. I've pulled up a root this big, all nice, tender, excellent root from a two-year-old vine because it always consumes the previous root and it builds a new root. And if it's got a much more vigorous vine, a ton more leaves, a lot more climbing ability, it makes a bigger root the second year because it's an older plant. Really fun to grow. I mean, can you imagine if you left your potatoes in the ground and they got like five times bigger the next year? That's exciting. There's a reason I love growing these things. Because they're crazy. Do you want to make the Blanky happy? Forget Hallmark or 
them something sappy. All you gotta do is give them a air potato like Debo Bipper. Make sure you get the edible type. Cause the other one will make your organs gripe. But one's hanging on a vine. Yeah. Picking with a nigga in that shirt is fine. Yeah, the farmers on the street are generous, true. Sharing the yams with all the good crew. No, we gonna watch all these farming on the vine. Every day's Christmas and I'm feeling fine. And that is how easy it is to plant yams. Go to your grocery store, look for Nyame yams. N-A-M-E, it looks like name yams. You'll find them in ethnic markets, you'll find them in Publix, and you'll sometimes find them in other grocery stores as well. They're not super common, but Publix stocks them all over where I am. You can pretty much go into a Publix and find one. So that's my first go-to spot. And then if I can't find it there, I look elsewhere. And then you just go ahead, you cut them up, put some ashes on them, plant them, and then you wait and make sure they have something good to climb on. Now there's one more trick, which is pretty cool. The late John Starnes, who was a great garden writer in Florida and, and an experimenter, would put a little bit of dog food underneath, like just dog food, high protein, right? You put a little of that down in the bottom of each hole and plant yams on top of it. And I thought that was a really cool trick. Now, when I tried that in my garden, the dogs actually came and dug it up. So I can't do that here, but maybe if you're in the city, that's an inexpensive source of a little bit of fertility, kind of a slow release nitrogen source. And it's got everything for a great, big, great Dane of a yam to grow. So hope you enjoyed that. I love these things. One of my favorite survival crops of all time and so much fun to grow. So catch you next time. Be sure to check out my book, Totally Crazy Easy Florida Gardening, if you wanna know other plants that grow really well in Florida. I cover this crop in detail and also in my book, Florida Survival Gardening. So check those out, I'll put links below. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I'm buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree. One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there go the heirloom tomatoes